Hi, I'm Jerry Shiles with the estate planning and elder law firm of Parman and Easterday. We have some special guests with us today and I'd like them to take a moment and introduce themselves. I'm Moya Kazarasili. I'm a registered nurse specializing in elder care and uh, grief recovery. I've been in the business for many, many years, but since 1981 I started specializing in geriatrics. That was my first uh, introduction to Alzheimer's, and I thought it was a buzzword and that it would go away, and here we are in epidemic form. I was the caregiver for my father, and that was my best education and the hardest job that I ever did, caring for him. He was uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's by one doctor and uh, Parkinson's and dementia secondary to Parkinson's by another doctor, so we never did know for sure what he had, but this was many years ago, and I didn't have the skills that I have today, and hopefully we can educate others to have the skills and make that journey just a tiny bit easier. That's our goal. Thank you, Bill. My name is Bill House. i am uh, been a 40-year pastor and still pastoring in church full-time. Uh, also been a chaplain and agreement coordinator for the last uh, six years uh, for hospice. Um, we uh, do a lot of uh, groups for Alzheimer's uh, related support groups. Uh, we and I have been working together now for about five years uh, on that and uh, my experience of course with Alzheimer's started early. I had a man in uh, my church that uh, his wife had Alzheimer's and I really didn't know how to help them. And then my mom was diagnosed about five years ago with Alzheimer's and died March the 19th, 2013. And so we walked this entire journey with her. And uh, we've learned some things not to do and some things to do. And uh, through that, some things we've tried and have, have worked well. But, yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, those of you who know me know my, my family history also. Uh, my father-in-law had Alzheimer's and, and lived with my wife and I for many years before he had to go into a nursing home. And uh, I had an uncle with Alzheimer's uh, who passed away. My father-in-law passed away in 2011. I have a, a cousin who passed away with, uh, with special needs. And so this whole area of working with the disability, with the dementia, with the Alzheimer's is very personal. Uh, my grandmother or died when she was 93, but probably for the last 10 or 12 years uh, suffered from an undiagnosed form of dementia where she really didn't know who she was or where she was. So this is very personal to me and I'm just thrilled to, uh, to have the opportunity to talk to Bill Amoy about this more. And uh, one of the questions that comes up a lot from people that I talk to is, what's the difference between uh, dementia and Alzheimer's? Um, there's not a great deal of difference. We kind of use the expression that dementia is dementia is dementia. Um, but dementia is kind of the overarching umbrella. And there are a number of different kinds of um, dementias, Alzheimer's being one of the leading kinds of dementia. Okay. I, I read a report a while back and now the numbers are kind of vague for me, but it seems like they said something like 60% of dementia patients have Alzheimer's. Actually, like I think it's, it's closer to 90%. To 90%, okay. And many of them have a vascular dementia, or it used to be called multi-infarct dementia, uh, in a combination with Alzheimer's. Okay. If they did the autopsies, they would see both. They would but, see both. But they, well, what about early onset dementia? I hear that come up every once in a while. Typically, that's with uh, 60 or younger. Okay. So it's, it's just, that it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, mm -hmm. it's dementia, exactly. but it just hits people at an earlier age. Right. And it's becoming, it's becoming uh, even epidemic there. These people are beginning, beginning to get it younger and younger and younger, uh, as early as in their late 40s, early 40s. Okay. Uh, it's interesting because I met with a couple, oh, it's probably been a couple of months ago now. The, the wife was 61, the husband was 59, and they were coming in to do advanced protective planning which was unusual at their age. And so I said, well, you know, this is kind of unusual. And they said, you don't understand. The husband's mother died of Alzheimer's. His father died of Alzheimer's. Her mother died of Alzheimer's. Her father died of Alzheimer's. And they were all in their 60s. So that leads me to a question, is this a normal part of aging? 
No, it is not a normal part of aging. We all have memory issues as we age, and I don't think that we multitask as well as we used to, but it, it's more than memory. It's the, the cognition also. It's not just memory. Uh, 65 is about 10% of the people start would, would be diagnosed at 65, okay. a little higher percentage at 75, and certainly 85 is, is primarily one out of two people have dementia. Not because it's 50-50, but because some of the 65 and 75 year olds are still alive. Okay. It, it's interesting, you know, I, my brother worked up until he was 77, very uh, high influential position, uh, retired about a year ago and was just diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's. At, at, he's not yet 78. So, I mean, he was just functioning at 100% level and just a matter of months later, all of a sudden, he's starting to, to see that. So, is this hereditary? I'll let, I'll let Bill start with that because we both have okay. kind of different... Okay. different uh, in, some, in some areas, they say it's not hereditary, but uh, my mom was... Uh, taken to, my father took her to Scott Weiss Clinic in, in Texas, okay. and Scott Weiss, once they diagnosed her with Alzheimer's, said that if your mother has Alzheimer's, that the siblings are 50% more likely to have Alzheimer's. Uh, not on the father's side, but on the mother's side. Okay. The Alzheimer's Association says if you have one parent that has dementia or Alzheimer's, you have a 3% risk uh, increase. Not that you're you're more susceptible, but you're, just your risk factors right. go up three percent. Mm -hmm. If you have both parents that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it increases uh, your risk to seven percent. Okay, so there's a higher percentage. But higher percentage, but okay. not. Uh, is there any, does DNA testing, you know, I see this uh, National Geographic has this genome mapping process and they're going back and tracking DNA. Does, does DNA indicate uh, dementia, or how do they de define, how do they diagnose dementia or Alzheimer's? Right now, we don't have 100%. Okay. It still goes back to the autopsy after death. PET scans, uh, well, I think they are, they're 85 to 90% accurate. They're finding that, but it takes more than just the PET scan. Typically, that takes lab work. They have to make sure that it's not hypothyroidism. They have to make sure that there's not an infection. They have to make sure that the um, chemical balance is, is right. So there's lots of things that they have to do before they can come up with that diagnosis. Neurological tests. Many mental status is... Um, the one that's most commonly used, okay. and um, so they put all of these together to, before they can come up with a diagnosis of dementia. The, the reason I ask is I get a lot of clients coming in saying, well, my husband was seen by his doctor, and the doctor has identified him as having dementia, but I don't hear they ran all these tests, they did all this, so is there some kind of a shorthand these doctors are using, or is that just... Uh, you know, an observation. Uh, you know, are they accurately portraying that when they're saying we're seeing signs of Alzheimer's? This person has early on, you know, early stages of Alzheimer's. Interestingly, most doctors get their information from family because early on, the dementia patient can go in and use these well, um, long-term behaviors. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? And they can do that little bit of social socialization with the physician and he feels like they're okay. Mm -hmm. So unless the family identifies some things, usually the doctors don't notice it themselves. They're not with them long enough. But we're required now, most of the doctors are giving them any mental status. I think that's a Medicare guideline that they're asking doctors to do. Okay. Uh, Another thing they check for sometimes is depression because depression can sometimes mimic a okay. memory loss. So if they can correctly diagnose that and it's depression, sometimes that, that solves the problem in itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a case in Tulsa not too long ago where they, they talked about during a neuropsych eval. Is that part of what you're talking about or is that just yes. a different name? Or 
basically the same thing, just your neurological testing. Okay. Yes. Okay. From a pastor standpoint, uh, how do you counsel a family uh, or the, the person themselves that, that's dealing with these Alzheimer's issues? What are, what are some of the things you say to them? Well, I had, a, I had an experience with a, a gentleman, as I said earlier, that's wife had Alzheimer's, and at the time, uh, he went through some real drastic changes in his life. In fact, she was married to uh, uh, another man who was very abusive before she married Bill, who was her husband at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, she would wake up in the morning and think he'd been out dancing all night and cheating on her even though he'd been in the house. And, and I didn't know how to deal with that until my mother had Alzheimer's. Um, now I tell, one of the big problems is having the resources. Mm -hmm. uh, when mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, we didn't know which way to go, we didn't know who to turn to. Um, and so we learned that the first thing to do is go to the Alzheimer's Association. They are uh, the best resource. They can get a family together, if, even if they're in another state, they can put you on a, on a conference call and all the family can be there at one time and they can go over the signs and things of dementia, which is which is really important because uh, if you live close to a loved one, you're seeing these things. I had a sister who lived in Dallas. She was like, oh, "Mom's okay," yeah, exactly. and mom wasn't okay, yeah. but she didn't see that. Talking on the phone, mom could play it off and, and seem to be okay. So getting her on the phone with us and having that conference put us all on the same page. That was important. And uh, one of the second things we did is they had. The Alzheimer's Association was just coming up with a course called Savvy Caregiver. Okay. It looked through the eyes of a professional and helped you to step back as a, instead of being a son, I was able to look through the eyes of a professional and see what needed to be done with mom. And they teach you uh, in a six week course, two hours each session, uh, take you from square one all the way through to the end of life. And that was just invaluable. And so that's the kind of things that our council started the Alzheimer's Association okay. then get into a course. Bill Moy, I appreciate your, your participation so much. This has been wonderful. I'm Jerry Shiles from the estate planning and elder law firm of Parman and Easter Day. We thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, thank you. you, Jerry.